So some of the biggest challenges are removing the stigma that are placed on young individuals after reincarceration, applying for a job and having to fear that you may not be accepted because of something you've done in the past, even though you've done your time and given back to society. Scared, they feel scared, they feel anxious about what awaits them, they might feel like their life is over. By that I mean they're at a point in their life where they can't fix this problem and they're done. Of the challenges you'll find are some of the, the stigma that's surrounded around you in the community where people will know that hey this person was incarcerated and that affects your outlook. The Bridging Project really came out of an earlier project that we had done about a year before with the City of Toronto called the 360 Project, Addressing Racism in Toronto. Within this context, we looked at two uh, populations in particular, uh, racialized LGBTQ uh, who are homeless, and secondly, Somali Canadians. Specifically with the Somali Canadians context, we found that there were some systemic issues with regards to their own experience within education, unemployment, housing, community engagement. And out of that, uh, we were able to dig a little deeper and find that there were gaps in services for Somali youth who have been incarcerated. Within that context, I was able to receive funding for a 10-month qualitative research project on looking at gaps in services for reintegrating uh, previously incarcerated Somali youth. There's a negative uh, stigma that you have to overcome and prove to others that you've reformed or have become a better individual. The objectives of the Bridging Project are twofold. Primarily, is really to look at the gaps in services that currently exist with reintegration programs. Unfortunately, the Somali youth are disproportionately represented in, in jails. Secondly, is to provide a space uh, and dialogue for an issue that remains taboo, uh, but also to reflect a different narrative of the Somali population that isn't just about incarceration. You know, the fact that we're involving le youth leadership, uh, that we're involving parents, that we're involving service providers, really applies this holistic context that uh, Somali youth play integral role into reintegration back into society. Beat by Zay. As the executive director of the Urban Alliance, uh, part of my role is to uh, involve in the capacity of leadership with our research projects. Um, I've been very fortunate to work with Jafar um, on the Bridging Project and really help support him um, in recruiting participants, but also developing the project. Part of that uh, uh, responsibility also is analyzing data that we've collected from our research, um, and then putting all this together in an uh, end of project forum to discuss what we've learned. I am responsible for organizing the community since this is a participatory action research project. So we've recruited community researchers uh, from the Somali community. Uh, we've also established a community advisory board, which reviews uh, the research process and the project itself. In addition to that, I'm responsible for recruiting Somali youth who were previously incarcerated for one-on-one -on -one interviews. And lastly, we will also be conducting focus group discussions, and I'm also responsible for recruiting various stakeholders, such as community leaders, parents and service providers for the focus group discussions. 
once we've compiled all that, um, my team and I will be analyzing the data and providing a written report to the funders of the project. Yeah, it's P. My last winner. On the block now, everybody drop down. Hear the shots ring round. Oh, and every day you face it, now everybody makes it. Watch it like a take it. Say now, you know you're gonna make it. You can't be fake it. You gotta live it. Yeah. Gotta go hard now, cause life is hard. Yeah, it's hard. And life is hard. On the boulevard, it's crazy. The reason why we focus on North Etobicoke is because that's the most densely populated area in Toronto that has a Somali community. And because a lot of the police activity that has been taking place within the Somali community has been taking place in North Etobicoke. Canada has like one of the largest Somali communities outside of Somalia, and most of them residing in Toronto and Ottawa. The reason why this project is specifically focused on the Somali population is because there have been a high number of Somali youth who have been incarcerated. This is well known within the community in Toronto at large uh, through various media outlets and reports. We wanted to analyze the reintegration process. Most of them have lived in a stable home, um, immigrated or were born here. So I would say maybe there is very little to do with Somali and it's just more being Canadian and growing up in, in, in the Canadian society. Um, because for a lot of them, they were born here and this is all they know. So there's very little about them that is Somali. For many of them, they don't speak the language, they've never been back home. Um, yes, they're ethnically Somali, yes, their parents did immigrate here probably in the early 90s and the late 80s. But in reality, the, the problems that they face and the challenges that they face are Canadian challenges. It's, it's a massive mountain that you have to climb to readjust re, re yourself and reintegrate back into society so that you feel as a, as a productive member. And so even starting off, it might be, you might be scared, you might feel intimidated, and just the task in and of itself might just be overwhelming for many. When, when you're trying to address this, you face two obstacles. Um, one is trying to understand and trying to identify the services that are available to individuals who are incarcerated, how accessible they are and how, uh, how effective they are. But then at the other end, we're trying to understand if they are aware of these services. So uh, what we're trying to see is where the gaps lie and how the gaps can be addressed so that we can create a bridge and hopefully provide meaningful service to individuals who are incarcerated. The, the great thing that Urban Alliance uh, on, on race relations is doing is, is, is tackling that head on by, by, by creating a project like this, by going out to the community and asking those in need. In terms of achievements, uh, one thing that I've been very impressed about is the large amount of participation from the Somali population. That is clearly reflected how important and personal this issue is. The fact that a lot of our community researchers, our focus group participants, um, have been volunteers uh, who dedicate their own time to be involved in this after work, on weekends, even on family day. The second achievement of this project, uh, which uh, myself and Jafar have been very proud of, is the fact that we have had previously incarcerated Somali youth come forward and share their narrative. You know, this is something very difficult to talk about. And although we're doing research, some of the questions are very personal. So we've been very fortunate and extremely grateful that we uh, can receive participants uh, in, within this context. For me personally, I feel like one of the biggest uh, barriers they're probably going to face is employment. So no matter where they go, no matter where they see, no matter how many times they try, some employers are going to bypass everything they have done and just look at that one stain. In regards to what we've discovered in this research project, I would say the main thing that we've discovered is that there's a, there's a lot of stigma um, within the community 
We've noticed this throughout the interviews. A lot of the individuals, uh, they stress the fact that they want to make sure that this research stays anonymous and confidential. And we realize that it's difficult to recruit individuals to participate because of the stigma that reincarceration has. Stating something like there's a high number of Somalis that are incarcerated, it's very vague and it is open to critique because you need to provide statistical evidence for this. It's difficult to do so because the information that is taken from them varies, but it's not based on their ethnicity. So it's based on their race, and then they also identify themselves as Muslim. So the best way that we can try to understand how many Somalis are in fact incarcerated is by looking at the percentage of individuals who responded or who were written down as being black and Muslim. So maybe 60%, 70%, 80% could be Somali, but we don't know. I think it's very important for people to know that not all Somalis are gangbangers or not all Somalis are, you know, are in jail. Even though, yes, this project is looking at a very small group of individuals who are incarcerated, the, the fact is the majority of Somalis are university graduates and are working and are productive members within the, within the Canadian society. When you have a community that um, is struggling to settle in Toronto and Canada where poverty rates are extremely high, where the education system is not working very well for, the, for our community. Parents have other issues as well. So these are already very stressed people because the living conditions of their lives has not been met uh, fully. And so it might be hard to ask of the parent to you know, be patient with this child, with this youth as they go through this, but it has to happen. I thought the project was incredible. I thought to look at the Somali community and their process through the criminal justice system, um, what that has done to their identity, what um, the reintegration process after they've left the system, what that looks like, and looking for the gaps in which we can help young people who have made decisions that probably were not right, um, find ways to, to, to build themselves back up and reconstruct with decisions that are right. Um, and I think looking for that gap uh, was important in finding how we're going to fill them. You, you can't create a solution unless you know what your problem is. And once you identify your problem, you know how to address it. And I think that's what the project stood out to me as I interacted with the different colleagues that were managing it. Um, and the young people who participated in it, they were able to share their voices on what their experience was. So it was a first-hand look at what these young people wanted to say, and I, and I thought that was um, incredible and, and, and timely. So. With service providers, I think what's needed is that they continually engage with young people as individuals um, and not to generalize their experience. Um, because a lot of society has, has done that. We know that in the Rob Ford uh, fiasco that happened a couple of summers ago, where the Toronto Star, even though they've retracted that statement, they, they mentioned the word Somali gangster more times than they mentioned the word crack. So when you have a community that's being reduced to a general expected reality, um, service providers need to be very conscious of the fact that an, a community is not being represented when this child or this youth comes to you. This is their individual story, their individual narrative, and they need an individual rehabilitative plan. And so if they're cognizant of that, I think um, the young people feel more um, understood and, and they'll invest more in their own process as well. If there's an opportunity for the Bridging Project to continue beyond what currently exists. Uh, I definitely think, uh, well, what I would love to see is that the ownership is once again given back to Somali youth. 
I think the fact that this project reflects their population is important to give them the tools and the access to really exercise their leadership regarding these issues. In the long term, I definitely see um, a reconciled community, a community that's um, healed some of the, the rocky process of settling in Canada. Um, a community that has its young people now their leaders. We'll have a community that's caring for their elders, we'll have a community um, that has better access to the Canadian landscape, um, that's able to navigate the Torontonian uh, spaces of power, of, of economics, of education. Um, we're, we're the raw material, that's how I see it. So as a Somali human being, as a Muslim human being, as a young man, as a young woman, are capable of doing problems. But you're very capable of doing incredible good. And that's where you can begin now. And that is how you beat stigma. When you become living proof, when you become living excellence, when you become uh, an undeniable good contributor in your society, your, your past can no longer hurt you.